In this video, we're talking about different endings for Halo Infinite's story, a beta for the multiplayer after E3, and what kind of map remakes will we see within Halo Infinite. That, and I answer a lot more of your questions within this video, so stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. So I recently went to my community page and asked you guys, do you have any questions about Halo Infinite? As there are a lot of things that kind of fall between the cracks or maybe some things that just deserve a little bit more detail that maybe I might have glassed over a little bit. So I go out to my community page and asked you guys that. And you guys certainly answered with like 150 plus comments on that thread alone. So I really appreciate your participation. If you want to catch the next Q&A session, make sure you subscribe to the channel to know when those community posts do go live. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo Infinite as we ramp up to to the release of that game, make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. Mr. Care Tucker asks, do you think we are going to see Cortana in the vanilla game or have to wait later in the future when she comes out with a DLC? This is certainly an interesting question because where Halo Infinite is starting out at, I guess it's, there was a battle between the Banished and the UNSC. They don't really mention much about the Created and the Guardians and Cortana a whole lot. Because the beginning of the game is the Discover Hope trailer. That's the beginning cutscene of the game. Those are the first moments of Halo Infinite right there. Of course, there is a scene at the end of that trailer where you see Chief walking towards the end of a control room of some sorts and puts his chip into looking like some sphere of blue as Cortana's voice talking over it. Since Halo Infinite is going to be a good starting point and a good way to kind of get into the franchise again of Halo's campaigns, it makes me wonder like how much we're going to see Cortana, how much are we going to see the created because it seems to be very focused on the banished and we saw Eshram right there as looking like the main villain of the game. I mean the cover of Halo Infinite doesn't show any form of the created, doesn't show Cortana at all in there as well if you zoom in on the visor of Chief you actually see Eshram on there as well most likely being the main villain. So in story element wise it wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense to have two main villains that you need to take down there are an equal level of importance you need to have like one clear bad guy and sequential bad guys that kind of you know build your way up to get into that final point and if we're focusing on the banished and fighting against Ashram, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense of how to throw in cortana and the created in there so from my experience right now of first of all finishing shadows of reach and also going through point of light right now about halfway through that book and see now, like, yeah, Cortana and the Created don't really play much of a role within those stories, but they're certainly noted. The actions that you see of your main characters within those books definitely know that, hey, the Cortana and the Created are out there, and if you make too much of a ruckus, basically, that uh, they'll come in and mess up your day. But will we see Cortana in there? I think so. Uh, to what capacity? Where well, I'm not not totally sure of, because it seems like maybe that we we will be picking up kind of hints along the way to maybe build a new Cortana, as we do know that the chip that's within Chief's hand during the Discover Hope trailer showcases the exact same type of serial number we've had for Cortana, but just one number higher, showing like a newer version of it. So are we gonna be like going through Zeta Halo, building up a new Cortana to go against, you know, super original Cortana? I don't know, but I kind of have a feeling we won't really see Cortana a whole lot. I think it should be kind of like a secondary thought because Ashram would be such an immediate threat. We need to take care of that. And probably once we beat Ashram, that's when Cortana will probably show up in as like the main villain you need to take care of. But I really don't feel like the Cortana and created storyline will be completed within the vanilla campaign story of Halo Infinite because I think they're trying to make me drag this out a little bit more to make it something a little bit more epic I guess once that finally does conclude. Arthur asks, do you think there will be multiple endings depending upon if you do all the side quests and collectibles, etc.? We've never really experienced anything like that when it comes to multiple endings in a way, and it would certainly make things a bit more messy when it comes to trying to tell a story over the course of 10 years. The Mass Effect franchise certainly ran across this issue quite a lot, and it made it actually really difficult to try to wrap up everything within the franchise in Mass Effect 3 where it all kind of leads to a conclusion but there's so many different ways you got to that conclusion how do you make it all make sense and that's an issue i'd be really afraid of happening with halo infinite i don't really want to see 
like different kind of endings or like a good ending in a way. I'd want to see like kind of the same kind of experience we've had with Halo campaigns, but maybe you have more context or maybe you get like an extra cutscene or some kind of little extra bit to kind of, you know, give a little more fan service or something like that to people who go off and do all these extra side quests. But once I think you go into multiple endings, it just starts really getting messy and how do you try to make a cohesive story when you have multiple different ways people ended things like, what if there's one ending you kill Cortana and another ending you don't kill Cortana? What's the next campaign DLC going to be like? And how do you fill in the blanks of those kind of situations? It just gets really messy. And I don't think that uh, 343 is going to try to bother with that a whole lot. Though it also does make me wonder as how are they going to make these little side missions and collectibles something worth doing within the game besides just going over there because it's more stuff to do or give it a purpose where like I go over there, I help out these Marines, means I get like some extra boost to my equipment, like 5% cooldown rate or something like that. Luke asks, do you think we'll have an open beta for Halo Infinite right after E3 this year? If you guys remember that E3 is happening this year, but it's gonna be completely online, completely free. So this is gonna be a, probably our best chance to get a really good look into what happens at E3, which would be pretty exciting for your casual fans. So I've heard it's much more of a business oriented kind of event and not necessarily one for the fans. That's where something like a Comic-Con or a PAX is kind of made for. But of course then who doesn't wanna be there in the gigantic auditorium when these amazing announcements happen. It's just really good energy that people wanna be a part of. Interestingly enough, E3 is happening on Saturday, June 12th, going on until Tuesday, June 15th. So starting on a Saturday is kind of interesting. And normally you want to do your big game announcements or your cool things about that are happening in the game during the week. So then gaming news media and YouTube content creators and stuff like that make content talking about your game. It certainly does happen on the weekends, but that's kind of like the B crew that happens during the week is when the major beats happen for gaming journalism and promotional stuff. Personally, I don't want to see any form of a beta announcement happen with Halo Infinite on its E3 reveal this year, because what I think will happen, it will cause a lot of people who just want to play the game early to just jump in and play it and not really, you know, get a good amount of time in to get the right kind of people. Cause I think with this Halo Insider program, they've been trying to build it up and do more practice runs with MCC. So when Halo Infinite's turn comes around, it's a well-oiled machine and we get exactly the information that we need to give them to make Halo Infinite awesome. So trust me, I would certainly ride the hype about Halo Infinite to probably be getting a huge peak in population and people talking about the game. But I think most effectively, I think that wouldn't be the right move to make. I'd rather save those potential slots in the beta builds that we'll be playing for the fans who will continually keep playing Halo and also new fans as well. Everyone's opinion about Halo Infinite is equal. There's no one has a better opinion than anybody else. A person playing the game for the very first time, never played Halo, their opinion is worth just as much to 343 as someone who's been playing for 20 plus years like me. Because you want to make sure your game is accessible for new players to have some fun, but also you know, pays homage to the old fans as well because they want that Halo experience. But personally, what I would like to see happen is not really necessarily an announcement of some flighting or early access builds happening in E3. I think you saved E3 for the big bombastic things like this is happening in campaign, this is happening in multiplayer and stuff like that. Like the really big sell selling points of the game. And then maybe like in a blog post, maybe like a month later, talk about the insider program, how to sign up for it, when are the dates gonna happen, who's gonna be invited and things like that. Because I'm sure once that information gets out, it's gonna get around the internet. You don't need E3 to get people excited about playing an early access build of Halo Infinite. I mean, Infinite was already trending on Twitter a couple days ago because it's the most anticipated game of the year still. But do I expect a multiplayer beta soon after? Yeah, probably like a month or two after the announcement at E3. Probably like in August or September, I could totally see something like that happening. Irito Asuna, if I pronounced that correctly, asks, Hey Kevin, do you think there will ever be a remake slash remastered version of the map Blood Gulch in Halo Infinite? I would be absolutely shocked if Blood Gulch does not get remade in Halo Infinite. For the huge influence we've gained from Combat Evolved, and how 343 is kind of calling back to the roots of Halo. When you think of Halo, what's the one map that everyone's mind comes to? It's gotta be Blood Gulch. Blood Gulch made the multiplayer experience for CE. If there was no Blood Gulch in CE, I don't know how popular Halo would have been. It's the single most remade map within the entire franchise and it just works and it's just super fun. 
and I would just be completely shocked if we do not see it come on the vanilla release of Halo Infinite. I might be a little bit biased just because Blood Gulch is my all-time favorite map within Halo. I feel like a lot of other people feel the same way. I mean, I've even seen memes saying like, where boys became men, it's on Blood Gulch and CE. And I just think it'd be a huge missed opportunity to kind of give a little bit of nostalgia. And plus, we really haven't had a true Blood Gulch remake since the Forge World integration back in Halo Reach. So it's been about 10 years since we've had a true Blood Gulch. So that's like the number one map everyone's mind would come to for a new multiplayer map that kind of call back the CE vibes, which we're getting within Halo Infinite. They specifically called back missions like Halo and also Silent Cartographer from CE as missions they're pulling a big influence on about their campaign structure. Why not pull some CE maps as well in the multiplayer? I think with the large scale game modes that we love with Halo, Blood Gulch just needs to be back in there. Master Chief, the tech gamer asks just one question. Why is it named Infinite? This question actually got quite a lot of upvotes in the poll, so I wanted to give an answer to this because it seems like a lot of people are interested in it. I think the reason why it's called Infinite is because you're really not looking for any kind of end with this game. It's going to be a game that's going to be continually iterated on, continually added on. It's going to be a game as a service. It's going to be a living, breathing thing where things come and go, added in, subtracted from, nerfed, buffed, and things like that where it's not going to be just your typical Halo experience where just new DLCs keep coming out every you know few months or so. It's going to be something we've never experienced for as a Halo fan. And Halo Infinite is going to be the Halo game that 343 is going to be developing on for the foreseeable future. They have no plans for an Infinite 2, or really not much of a plans of maybe even side games. I think Infinite is going to be viewed as a platform to experience Halo on you go to Halo Infinite. So that's why they use the word infinite. It's just that there's an infinite amount of possibilities, essentially. It's gonna just gonna keep on going. Now they say 10 year plan because they're just gonna say, next 10 years, what are we gonna do for Halo, Halo Infinite? When those 10 years come up, what's gonna happen? 343 doesn't even know. They're so focused on trying to get this game out. They just know that within the foreseeable future of 10 years or so, the Halo Infinite is going to be where you want to go play Halo. If you guys like these kind of Q&A videos, make sure to tap that like button. If you missed any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right here. Got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.